This video is brought to you by Sailrite. In this video, we'll walk you through the steps required to make your very own cockpit cushions for your boat. This type of cushion is called a box cushion, which is the most popular type of cushion made worldwide. It's used in multiple applications from homes, RVs, boats, and indoor-outdoor living spaces. After watching this video, you should be prepared to spruce up your boat's cockpit or other living area with a brand new set of cushions. Angela from the Sailrite Loft is going to show us how it's done. Lay pattern material over the location of the cockpit cushion you want to make. Make sure it's laying flat. You can use painter's tape if needed to hold it in place. Then take a marker and mark around the perimeter on the pattern material. At this open location where there's nothing to trace against, we'll use a straight edge at the loft table to close that area off in a later step. It's also a good idea to label the pattern for quick identification, so as not to get confused if multiple cushions are required. Here it is marked zipper, as this is where the zipper will be installed along the back side of the cushion, and there it's the front. Angela's not a sailor, so she marks this the right side, but we should label it the starboard side. Back at the loft floor, we'll close off that open area with our marker. Then we'll confirm that our lines on the pattern material are straight and true. If not, we'll straighten them out with a yardstick and a new line. Once you're happy, cut out the pattern material with scissors. Let's use Sailrite's fabric calculator to figure out how much fabric is required. There are hundreds of fabrics that work perfect for cockpit cushions. We're going to choose a Sunbrella marine grade fabric. And we're going to choose a red colored fabric for our boat. We scroll down, pick the color that we're interested in, and you'll notice there's a good description and also videos covering that fabric. On the fabric's landing page, you'll find a very helpful resource called the Fabric Calculator. Click that button and the Sailrite Fabric Calculator will pop up. We want to calculate how much fabric is required for our cushions. So we're going to click the box cushion because that's what we're making here. Once we click that, all we need to do is feed the measurements into the appropriate field here. We're going to be making two cushions that are the same size. So we're going to do a quantity of two here. Our fabric width that we've chosen is 46 inches. If the fabric you've selected has stripes, you can click that or is railroaded. Here we're going to do a full cushion calculation, so let's hit the Calculate button. You'll notice that instantly we get the amount of fabric that is required, and we also get the amount of piping that will be for top and bottom. And we also get the cut panel rendering, so we know how to nest each one of the plates and the boxing. Now if we only want to calculate for the top plate in the boxing, click this button and hit the calculate button. Now we know how much fabric is required just for the top plate and the boxing for our two cushions. After using the fabric calculator, you can simply order the amount of fabric that you need from the Sailrite website. At Sailrite, many of the Sunbrella fabric prices will automatically drop in the shopping cart. Once the pattern is taken, we can use it to cut the top and bottom plates of our cushion. Sailrite's guidelines for cutting the plates is to add a quarter inch around all sides of the pattern material. After sewing the boxing on using a 3 8 inch seam allowance, this will result in the plates being slightly smaller than the pattern we just made, which makes the finished cushion covers fit tightly to the foam. Here you can see Angela adding the quarter inch to the bottom plate. We are using a cushion underlining fabric for the underside of our cushions. This vinyl fabric keeps cushions from slipping and allows for water drainage and great air circulation. We are going to be using a dry fast foam and the better the air circulates the faster the foam dries out if it gets wet. A little bit later on in this video, we'll have an in-depth discussion about the types of foam you can use for a cockpit cushion. Cushion underlining material can simply be cut out with scissors. We can now use the bottom plate, which is a cushion underlining fabric, as a pattern to cut the top plate out. 
Angela is tracing around the bottom plate on top of our Sunbrella marine grade fabric with a yardstick and a marker. Then she will label the plates for quick identification so we know which side will have the zipper installed. She is marking inside her seam allowance, which will be 3 8 inch, so it will not be visible when sewing. Sayerite strongly recommends cutting Sunbrella marine grade fabric with a hot knife to keep the cut edges of the fabric from unraveling. We're using the Sayerite edge hot knife on top of a metal ruler to avoid damage to the tabletop below. If your cushion requires piping, follow the steps in this chapter. If not, you may skip this chapter. We will be installing piping to the top side of our cockpit cushion. Fold the top plate in half to find the center on the side that will have the zipper sewn onto it. Then crease or mark the fabric with a pencil at that location. You can make your own piping or you can use a prefabricated deluxe vinyl piping from Sayerite. Believe it or not, the deluxe vinyl piping looks great with Sunbrella fabric, so we'll be using that for our cushion. Start the piping at the back side of our top plate, where the zipper will be installed, and leave about 3 inches of piping extending past the center mark you made earlier, and start sewing about 3 inches away from the center mark. This approximate 6 inches of unsewn piping will make it easy to join the opposite side when we are finished sewing it to the top plate. We are sewing the piping or welting on with a cording foot installed on the Sayerite 111 sewing machine. If you're using the Sayerite Ultrafeed sewing machines, the cording foot is built into the standard foot. But just because we have a cording foot or tunnel does not mean that you don't have to guide the piping as you sew. It will not automatically feed the plate and piping on without careful guidance from you. When we get to the corner, we will stop sewing about a half inch from the corner. Bury our needle in the fabric by rotating the balance wheel by hand, then turn the fabric almost 90 degrees. The fabric will rotate on the needle, so we will not lose our position. It's also a good idea to lift the presser foot when turning the fabric. Just don't forget to lower it before you sew again. We are creating an almost 90 degree turn, but if you want to make a more rounded corner, that can be done also using the same technique. We're going to skip ahead here and show yet one more corner. We get to the corner, we bury our needle about a half inch away from the corner. We lift our presser foot, we'll roll the fabric around to make it almost 90 degree. We'll line up the piping, we'll lower our presser foot, and then we'll continue to sew. When we have sewn all the way around, securing our piping to the top plate, and we come to the middle where we started our piping, we need to join the piping here. So we will stop sewing about 3 inches away from the center mark. We will cut the piping at the center mark with scissors. This prefabricated deluxe piping is glued together and can easily be peeled apart to reveal the foam piping cord on the inside. Just peel back about 2 inches of the cover fabric. Then cut away the excess piping on the opposite side, being sure that you are cutting directly over the end of the foam piping cord so they will be even. Be careful not to cut away the fabric cover you just peeled apart. That needs to be left intact. Now we will tuck the end we just cut inside the fabric cover that we just unpeeled and then sew it down securely. This is one of many ways piping can be joined together. If your cockpit cushion requires piping on the underside, also follow the same procedure to secure it to the bottom plate. Our design does not require it. Next, we will be concentrating on making our boxing strips for the side of our cushion. We will be joining or sewing our boxing together at each corner. So to determine the correct length of our boxing, we will take the measurements of the side of the cushion and then cut our boxing to that exact length. It is important to take measurements from the top plate and not the pattern. The boxing for the zipper plaque should be slightly longer due to the possible shrinkage that may happen when the zipper is sewn to it. To determine the length, multiply the edge of the plate that will include the zipper by 1.0125. This will increase the length by 1.25%. Angela is measuring one side of the plate now, and then she will measure out a boxing strip that is equal to it on her fabric. When calculating the boxing lengths, you may want to use this helpful fraction to decimal chart to convert your measurements. 
Not only do we need to know the length of the boxing, but we need to know the correct width of boxing to cut. To do this, simply measure the foam you'll be using. Ours is two inches. To that measurement, add between a quarter inch and three quarter inch. Keep in mind that thinner cushions look best with more allowance added, and thicker cushions look best with less. Basically, adding less of an allowance will allow the seams to roll into the edging of the cushion. Our foam is two inches in width, so we will be making boxing that is a width of two and a half inches. A half inch has been added on one side only. After our regular boxing is measured for length and width, we will now need to concentrate on the zipper plaque boxing, the boxing that includes the zipper, usually in the back side of the cushion. Measure the zipper that you will be using across its width. Ours is one and one eighth inch. To determine the zipper plaque boxing width, use the boxing width you just determined, but also add the total width of the zipper to that measurement. This will be the required width of the zipper plaque boxing. Now we need to determine the zipper plaque boxing length. To do this, measure the side of the top plate that will include the zipper. Then increase the length by 1.25% as we discussed earlier. So our edge is 59.62 inches, so we will need to multiply that by 1.0125 and we get 60.36 inches. When the zipper is sewn to the boxing, it has a tendency to shrink up the length slightly. So this added length percentage should help us avoid having a boxing strip that may be too short. We can always cut away any extra length if it's too long before we join the boxing strips together. We'll show you that a little bit later on. After your boxing strips are marked to the correct size, cut them out with a hot knife to help prevent the edge from unraveling. All of our boxing strips are cut to size now. We need to make the zipper plaque next. To do this, take the correct boxing strip, the widest one, and fold it in half down its length. Remember when we measured the width of our zipper, we need to take that measurement and divide it by two. Now take your boxing and measure over from the folded side and mark one end of the boxing with a pencil, that calculated measurement. Here at that mark is where we want to create a tack stitch. This stitch should be about six millimeters or longer and do not reverse at the beginning or the end of the stitch because it will have to be removed in a few more steps. After that, cut along the creased edge or folded edge carefully. You can just use scissors here as this edge will be on the inside of our cushion and it will be covered mostly with the zipper. No need to worry about the unraveling. Splay open the cut section so it lays flat. Then take it to the sewing machine and sew along the splayed open side where the zipper will eventually be placed. We've decided to start the zipper about 12 inches from the end of this boxing, so we will sew to that location and then lay our zipper on top of the splayed open section so the stitch is about an eighth inch away from the zipper teeth. Be sure to do some reversing to lock the stitch at the end of the zipper. You may have to use a roping zipper foot if your presser foot is too large or if your machine has a needle positioning lever like the Sayride Alterfeed LSZ sewing machine does, position the needle so it's close to the zipper teeth, not more than an eighth inch. You can see that Angela is holding the zipper so the teeth of the zipper are centered over the tack stitch area. That's important. If your measurements are correct, the zipper's width should almost equal the width of the splayed open section. If it's off slightly, don't worry, it still should work. Here we are coming to the end of our boxing and you noticed we did some reversing over the end of the zipper and at the end of the boxing. Now that our zipper is secured, we can sew the opposite side. We always try to sew along the same side of the presser foot so we are assured the stitch will be the same distance from the teeth on both sides of the zipper. So we are starting from the opposite end of the boxing here, and we can sew rather quickly because the zipper is held down in place. Follow the same procedure. To install the zipper slider, separate the teeth by pulling them apart. You only need to separate a few inches of the teeth. Then push the zipper slider onto the teeth, fat side of the slider first, with the slider puller facing the outside surface of the boxing. You must ensure that the two zipper sides are being fed into the slider evenly. This may take some patience if you've never done it before. Bingo! The slider is installed.
On the underside of the zipper plaque boxing, we will cut a strip of fabric to reinforce the 12 inch area that does not include a zipper. We will carefully sew along the top stitch that we use to secure the zipper in place. And when we get to the area where the zipper starts, we will stop and sew across the teeth, reversing a few times. But we'll do that when we sew the other side. So here we're sewing the opposite side, but the same end of the boxing. We'll sew all the way to where the zipper starts. Do some reversing, bury our needle, rotate the fabric, and we're going to sew in reverse here across the teeth and do it carefully so the needle does not deflect. Do a little bit of reversing and you're done. You'll need to do that to the other end as well. Now we need to rip open the tack stitches with a seam ripper. Do this carefully so as not to rip the fabric and stop where you reverse stitched over the zipper's teeth. We can now join the boxing sections together, but before we do that we need to confirm that the zipper plaque boxing is not too long. To do this just line it up with the top plate and run it along the edge to the opposite side. If it's too long, cut its length so it is equal to the length of the plate's edge. As you can see, ours is just about perfect, so our 1.25% factor that we did earlier is exact. But depending upon your sewing machine and the fabric choice, your needle pucker phenomenon may be slightly different. I like to lay the plate and the boxing out as shown here, so I know that I'm joining up the correct boxing to boxing strips. We will sew the ends with a straight stitch about 3 8 inch away from the ends of the strips. Sew a straight stitch of about 6 millimeters or more to reduce shrinkage as much as possible. Also, as you join the boxing ends, you will instantly be creating a right side and a wrong side. Sombrella marine grade fabric does not have a right or wrong side, but our seamed ends creates a right side and a wrong side. So be sure you are sewing the ends on correctly so the outside surfaces are always facing each other. So to recap, we are sewing 3 8 inch from the end with a 6 millimeter straight stitch or longer and we are reversing at the beginning and end of our stitches to lock the stitch in place. Now here we are sewing the final boxing sections together. Notice that the outside surfaces are facing each other. After the materials list chapter at the end of this video we will display a simple step-by-step -step checklist which makes it easy to remember the important steps in creating this cushion. So check it out at the end of this video. To join the boxing to the top plate, we need to match up a corner first. Then after we are sure the boxing is in the correct location, we will start sewing down one of the short edges of our cushion near the approximate center location. Since our cushion has piping, we are using a cording foot on the Sarat 111 sewing machine. We need to carefully feed the piping into the presser foot's tunnel while also being sure that the raw edges of the fabric are flush. If the corners do not match the corners of the boxing, you're wasting your time, so be sure they do before you start sewing. We will sew to the corner and bury our needle at that corner, then rotate the fabric about 90 degrees and continue sewing down the length of the opposite side. If your measurements are correct, the boxing's seam should fall directly on the corner of the plate. If it does not, then you can make slight adjustments as you sew by pulling or pushing the boxing fabric as you sew it along its length. But be careful, you cannot make drastic shrink or pull changes all at once or you will have wrinkles in your finished cushion. As you can see here, Angela is checking to be sure the corner will match up. If it didn't, then she would make slight adjustments by pulling or pushing the correct panel while she sews. Here we are coming to another corner, and we want to show this one more time before we skip ahead. Needles right on the corner. She buries the needle. She lifts her foot, rotates the fabric, lowers the foot, and then continues to sew. We've sewn all around the cushion now and are coming to the point where we began our stitching. 
We will sew a few inches over the area and reverse the machine. And our plate and boxing is now secured. Let's turn this one corner right side out so we can inspect it. If you find you missed a corner or didn't sew it well, you can always put it right back in your machine and re-sew it now. No one will ever see the stitches on the inside of your cushion. All we need to do now is sew the bottom plate onto the boxing edge. Be sure you are sewing the correct sides together. Ours is labeled for easy identification. The process is done just as it was when we sewed the top plate and boxing together. Match up the corners and start sewing 3 8 inch away from the raw edge of the fabric. We find it easier to sew the assembly together with the bottom plate under the top plate and the boxing slightly folded out as shown here. Here we are using the deluxe magnetic guide to help guide our panels in accurately so we get a stitch that is almost exactly 3 8 inch away from the edge. Be sure to line up the fabric carefully and check to be sure the corners are matching up as you sew. Our design does not require piping here, so we can sew this seam using a regular sewing machine presser foot. However, we just left the cording foot on the machine and are still using it because it works. Okay, but not great for sewing regular seams. We're going to remove the magnetic guide to make it a little bit easier to see how we're doing here. Here at this corner it looks like it's slightly off. Not so much that it needs to be changed, but enough that Angela is going to be sure that the next corner will still match up well. Why are we showing this? Because we want you to know that you do not have to be exact, but you do have to be close. The only real critic of your cushion will be you. Most others will never notice small issues like this. Now since that seam was off by about a quarter inch or less, she's going to sew only a few inches at a time and then check to be sure the next corner is still going to match up. If not, she can stretch or push the fabric to make modifications as she sews. Notice that when she stops sewing to check, she buries her needle in the fabric so she does not lose her position. Let's continue to this corner and see if it'll match up. Yes, it looks like it's almost perfect here. If I look closely, it looks like we're about a sixteenth of an inch off. That is definitely close enough. Now we'll just continue this process all the way around. We'll not show any more of this. Here we are coming to the part where we started our stitch to join the bottom plate to the main assembly. We will sew about an inch over the stitch and then do some reversing. And we are done. Open the zipper by pulling the slider back and we can turn the cover right side out. Now let's discuss the types of foam that you can use. For a cockpit cushion, Sarek recommends only two types of foam, a dry fast foam or a closed cell foam. Let's first discuss the most popular foam for cockpit cushions, that's dry fast foam. This reticulated foam has an open cell structure. The open pores allow water and air to pass through the foam easily. As a result, dry fast foams are softer and cooler to sit and sleep on than closed cell foams. But most importantly, for cockpit cushions, this foam dries out rather quickly when it gets wet. If a breathable fabric is chosen like umbrella fabric or if a cushion underlining fabric is used on the bottom side of the cushion as we are doing in this video, it will dry out quickly. For more information about this foam, visit our website. Closed cell foam is yet another type of foam that can be used for cockpit cushions. It does not absorb water so it never gets wet and it also floats and can be used for a man overboard situation. 
This foam is rather firm and some complain that it is not as comfortable as a dry fast foam. Again, for more information, check out the Sayerite website. We do not recommend a polyurethane foam. This type of foam will soak up water like a sponge if it gets wet and may take weeks to dry out. Believe me, water always finds a way inside a cushion cover, especially a cockpit boat cushion. Polyurethane foam is much less expensive and can be used inside the boat and for outdoor applications where its use is limited for amount of time or it's protected with a silk film. Before I go, I want you to know it is commonplace for fabricators to glue sections of foam together to add to the width, the length, or even the thickness of the foam. Again, if you have any questions about foam, be sure to give us a call at Sailrite. To cut our foam to size, we will use the pattern material and add 1% to both dimensions. However, we will never add less than a half inch to any side. So take your dimension and multiply it by 0 0.01 to figure the amount to add to the size of the pattern. If your cushion is in irregular shape, take the average of the measurements and add 1%. See our example in this illustration. Here we are using our pattern material on top of the foam and adding the appropriate amount to both dimensions. We are using a dry fast foam which can be marked with a marker easily. After we strike lines on the foam it is always a good idea to label the foam so we know which side is the back. This zip indicates where the zipper side is. We can cut the foam with an electric foam cutter. Here we are using the AccuCutter 350 but you can also cut the foam with an electric kitchen knife. This is a 4 inch scrap piece of foam and notice that we're using the electric kitchen knife against the side of a table to help keep it straight as we cut the foam. After the foam is cut to the appropriate size we can insert it inside the cushion cover. This process of stuffing the foam in the cover is best done with another helper. Be sure you stuff the corners of the foam into the corner of the cover by hand. This will take some time, so be patient as the cover should fit very tightly over the foam. Once you're happy with the location of the foam in the cover, you can zip it closed. The cover may still need pushing or rolling to find its appropriate location over the foam, but that can be done after it's been closed up. The cockpit cushion is now complete and now you should have all the information to tackle this project on your own. If not, give us a call at Sailrite. We're more than happy to assist you with this type of project. Stay tuned for the materials list and the helpful 11 step checklist of building cushions. That's coming up next. Here's the materials list that was used to build this set of cockpit cushions. Since these cushions are for an outdoor application, we used a marine fabric for exterior applications. You can find hundreds of those types of fabrics at the Sayerite website. If your box cushion is for an indoor application, you'll also find those types of fabric at Sayerite too. Here's the helpful checklist that we promised you. This step-by-step -step checklist along with this video should greatly help you when it comes time to build your own box cushion. You may want to pause the video to study this short 11-step list. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sayerite website or subscribe to the Sayerite YouTube channel today. It's your loyal patronage to Sayerite that makes these free videos possible. Thanks for your support.